At dawn one morning recently, Lincoln bombers of the Royal Air Force and the Royal Australian Air Force took off from Singapore to launch one of the biggest combined air ground attacks on communist terrorists hiding in the northern jungles of Malaya. The operation was codenamed Operation Termite. Loaded with 75 tons of 1,000 pound bombs which were to open the attack, the Lincoln set course for their targets. These were located in 250 square miles of the roughest and toughest jungle country in the Federation, lying to the east of Ipoh. While the Lincolns were on their way, paratroops of the Special Air Service Regiment were clambering into Valletta's at Kuala Lumpur Airfield, preparing to launch the second phase of the attack by following the bombs onto the targets. such as the new gear for descending trees being used in action for the first time, these men at first chatted and joked against the roaring engines, but soon gave up and just waited. Some fell asleep. By now, the Lincolns had reached their targets. This patch of jungle hides many communist camps. Bomb doors open. Bombs away! showed utter devastation. Tops of trees were still falling five hours later. At advanced headquarters in Ipoh, the Director of Operations, General Bourne, the Commander-in-Chief Far East Air Force, Air Marshal Sanderson, and other senior officers were kept in touch with progress of the complex operation by air controllers over the targets. Valletta is now on target. SAS paratroops put on their helmets and make final checks on shoot straps. A doctor was one of the first men out, identified by a white bandit. First, a dummy run to assess the wind drift. And then, action station! The first stick of five men stand alert at the door. Red, green, and away! as the dispatcher urges them out. And then the next stick goes. Dropping from 700 feet, the men took just over a minute to reach the ground. There was not more than 120 yards between the first and last man of each stick, and there were only six minor injuries among the 200 paratroops who dropped. Meanwhile, from Epo airfield, Naval helicopters took off to carry even trackers, Aborigine field teams, and heavy radio equipment into the area. They later lifted out the injured paratroops.
Landing sites were cut from the jungle for the helicopters by some of the SAS men, while others closed in on the terrorist camps. Down they came on the scrap of clearing and went back for another load. Ground troops, some led by the Eben trackers, set off on their arduous patrols. Patrols that may lead to nothing in this difficult country where a man can hide two feet away and not be seen. In the first days of the operation, three communist terrorists were killed, 30 camps were discovered and destroyed, valuable information was obtained, and quantities of food, clothing, equipment, and ammunition were captured. The dead terrorists were lifted out to EPO for identification. From the latest reports, the first phase of Operation Termite was well on the way to achieving its object to disrupt the communist terrorist hideouts in the jungle east of Ypres.